Well, welcome to the start of summer, Southeast Texas. The holiday is here, and as America turns the page on a new chapter, millions have big plans, from the beaches to hitting the highways or flying for the first time since the pandemic. Memorial Day weekend offers a return to normalcy for a lot of us, and we'll all be watching the weather. Absolutely, and Patrick's here with the forecast. It's a little tricky, certainly for tomorrow. What are you thinking? Well, we still think that uh, a good 30, maybe to as much as a 60% coverage is expected over portions of the area. Best chances look like uh, there'll be uh, and through inland southeast Texas, say Lumberton, right on into the Triangle uh, coming up tomorrow afternoon. We're going to see some rain tonight, uh, but uh, again, we'll reload and see it again tomorrow afternoon. And finally, that cold front comes through and it looks like beautiful weather for all of us from the lakes to the beaches Sunday into Memorial Day. Right now, watching a few showers over towards the lakes area. That's the offshoot of uh, showers and storms off towards our west. Those are diving to the south and east, so I think we'll see some... Uh, rain overnight as this continues to push on off towards at least off towards the east future cast showing that we get grazed by that rain overnight nothing severe anticipated until we recharge coming up for tomorrow afternoon could see scattered showers and storms more on your storm tracker forecast coming up on 12 news Thanks, Patrick. Well, now that COVID cases are down and vaccination rates are up, people are just itching to get out and have a little fun. And this certainly is a big weekend for that. A lot of people say it feels like life has returned to some sense of normalcy with so many COVID restrictions being lifted. If you're headed to the beach over in Galveston, listen closely. Expect to see fewer lifeguards on duty. Beach Patrol is not calling it a lifeguard shortage per se, but they certainly are having issues with staffing. And with beachgoers coming out earlier and staying later in the day, safety is a consideration. That concerns us. You know, weekdays have been an issue, um, having enough staff out here. Um, and also, most of our labor is seasonal workers, so they're like students. And, you know, they come out on the weekends and in the, in the season, and then summer they'll come. Well, lifeguards will be covering nine miles of the Galveston Beach this weekend, and they'll have at least one lifeguard on duty at all 32 towers. Now, if you're hitting the road, prepare to pay more for your fuel. AAA says that Texas gas prices are the highest they've been in three years. Locally, we're averaging $2.68 a gallon. That's almost an entire 10 cent jump since last month. We're seeing about a 12 cent increase on average over the last month. Today, the average is sitting at 268 as we go into Memorial Day weekend, and it did climb a little bit from yesterday. We're looking at 2.8 million Texans alone that will be driving just this weekend for leisure. And that's a 16% increase of people traveling from last year for Memorial Day. Now, airports, they're packed too as Americans push forward and turn the page on this next chapter as the pandemic wears on. If you're traveling, keep those masks handy. The Homeland Security Secretary says he expects the federal mask mandate to, quote, hold true until probably mid-September. That mandate requires you to wear masks at airports, on planes, on buses, and on rail systems. And speaking of flying, a scale could be in your future. Yes, one that tells you how much you weigh. Mm -hmm, you have. You may have heard the claims about airlines weighing passengers. New at 10, Ariane Dattil verifies what's allowed. With COVID-19 cases declining, as more people are getting vaccinated, more Americans are eager to get on airplanes and jet to their destinations. But a recent blog post titled U.S. Airlines May Start Weighing Passengers at the Gate might have some who packed on those quarantine pounds hesitant to fly again. So let's verify. Could U.S. airline companies start weighing passengers? Our sources, the Federal Aviation Administration, American Airlines, and Southwest Airlines. The blog in question cited a 2019 FAA advisory circular that said operators can ask passengers to participate in a weight survey to help calculate the weight distribution and balance of an aircraft. If a passenger declines being weighed, the circular says airlines can ask others to be weighed through random selection. In an email statement to verify, the FAA said weighing passengers is possible but unlikely, adding, quote, while weighing passengers at the gate is an option, most operators will likely rely on updated methods for estimating passengers' weights. Those methods include data from the CDC to estimate the average weight of passengers, something American Airlines and Southwest Airlines told Verify they do. Although unlikely, a spokeswoman from the FAA said that weighing passengers is nothing new. In fact, a previous FAA advisory in 2005 had nearly the same wording as the one issued in 2019. So we can verify, yes, 
U.S. airlines could start weighing passengers, but that's been an option for years. So don't worry about those extra pounds. Enjoy your next flight in the friendly skies, and don't forget to take me with you. Want something verified? Email us or send us a text. For more Verify stories and to sign up for our newsletter, go to verifythis.com. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. Some good info. Out. And now there's some big news tonight. If you're making plans for later in the summer, Carnival Cruise has said that the CDC has approved sailing out of Galveston starting in July. That's the plan the company has been pushing in recent months. The Carnival Vista and the Breeze will be based in Galveston and they should be the first to set sail. Carnival ships will also be moving soon out of Miami and Fort Lauderdale come July. Now all new at Jen, meeting the people where they are. The Port Arthur Health Department is working to get folks out on the water vaccinated. Officials are working with the Port Arthur International Seafarer Center to get vaccines to crews while their ships are in ports. Today, crew members on a cargo vessel rolled up their sleeves before heading to South Africa. Another 22 folks were in the port from India. These essential workers are responsible for moving items like energy, lumber and food all across the water. And new tonight, we are continuing to ask questions to try and get answers about the transit issues we first reported on earlier this week. As you may remember, the union that represents Beaumont Transit workers put out a report saying that nearly 90% of buses are unfit for service. 12 News reporter Jordan James hit the bus stops to ask riders about their experiences. After years of riding Beaumont Transit, can we get help? Desperation is growing for riders like Douglas Nicholas. He calls the conditions on board the buses deplorable. Fifties buses that is not running properly. It's leaking all. It's not run, running properly. Busted windows, broken hinges, and lots of leaks. That's what drivers say they're facing. There's no way these vehicles should be in the shape that they're in right now. No reason. Somebody dropped the ball. The buses are operated by First Transit, and the drivers are members of Amalgamated Transit Local 1031. The union did its own safety audit. Out of 18 vehicles inspected, 16 had safety defects. Amanda Haynes, vice president of the union group, believes more needs to be done to protect passengers and employees. We work hard for it. We, we, we're we here to provide a service and we can't do that successfully if we don't have the equipment to, um, to, to operate with. This all comes as the union continues negotiating a new collective bargaining agreement with First Transit and the city of Beaumont. As right now, it seems like we're just in the back, the back shadows, just, you know, we just here and no one wants to acknowledge that they have the responsibility of this transit system. A similar crime shared by those who depend on it most. Hey, a lot of people complain about it, wrote statements about it, but it ain't nothing been done. In Beaumont, Jordan James, 12th News. All right, well, Chris Boone, Beaumont's community development director, tells 12 News he's reaching out to the company that operates the buses. He wants to learn more about the extent of these issues. Last week, the city council approved the purchase of 16 new buses. New info tonight on the San Jose shooter who killed nine of his co-workers at that California rail yard. Samuel James Cassidy has stockpiled weapons and 25,000 rounds of ammunition at his home. He set it on fire to coincide with that shooting. Now, a survivor of the mass shooting says a co-worker's warning likely saved his life. Gravinder Singh in the black jacket there says a colleague made a phone call and likely saved countless others as well. That call was to alert them that there was a shooter in his building person telling your vendor to get everybody out. Definitely tough. Uh, I mean, I would say he saved our life. Uh, you know, he, he gave us a call. I'm sure he was calling others. Unfortunately, the person who made that frantic call died minutes later. He was among the nine casualties. In case you missed it, Port Arthur police want your help figuring out who was involved in a deadly shooting at the Avery Trace Apartments. Police say the victim, Steve Somerville, was shot several times. The 32 year old later died at the hospital. Police don't have a motive and they're looking for witnesses. It's down to the deadline for lawmakers in Austin. Here's an overview of the budget they've sent to Governor Abbott's desk. $248 billion to spend between 2022 and 2023. 
That's actually a decrease of $13.5 billion from the prior budget cycle. Keep in mind, Governor Abbott has the power to veto the proposal. And finally, a positive step forward for our women in the military. Texas lawmakers have passed the Vanessa Guillen Act. Senate Bill 623 is headed to the governor's desk for a stamp of approval. The bill aims to protect military members who report sexual harassment and assault without fear of retaliation. Vanessa Guillen was killed last year on her base at Fort Hood by a fellow soldier.